What is up everybody? I'm No Lux Given and today we're gonna take a look at a recent tournament that I just won. Here's the deck list. Pretty straightforward stuff. We're running almost a stock Spectrum Destroyer list. Nothing super exciting going on, but there is a reason for that. This tournament was open deck lists, which means before each game, you and your opponent send your decks to each other. So you're going to know exactly which 12 cards your opponent is playing. And I think that this format is definitely a little bit interesting. There's some trade-offs either way. Uh, I do think that we're mostly going to see closed deck list tournaments in Marvel Snap because this definitely brings in some interesting gameplay elements. But I wanted to play a deck that I thought played to those gameplay elements, and one of the things with uh, an open decklist format is there's not really any reason to deviate from a stock 12 card list because you're not going to be able to surprise your opponent with anything regardless. Uh, so I think that that is definitely an interesting implication of the format. It kind of discourages you from trying anything experimental because your opponent's going to have an idea that it's coming anyway. So that's why I wound up playing just a stock Spectrum Destroyer list, though I do think that this list has some other things that make it really strong in battle mode. It's got Armor and Cosmo, which are pretty good tech cards depending on what your opponent is playing in their own right. And I also kind of like Professor X, and I don't mind that my opponents could know Professor X is coming. I think that could actually be a good thing. And when I knew it was an open deckless tournament, that made me, my first thought was Professor X, because I think that there is something scary about knowing that your opponent has Professor X in their deck and could potentially win with it. So I do think that Professor X is a good option for battle mode. I think that this deck is a great option for battle mode even, and it's a really good budget deck that's probably in the title uh, for clickbait purposes. The fact that this deck only uses one Series 3 card in Destroyer, and um, maybe Mojo? Mojo might also be a Series 3 card, but I think the rest of these cards are all Series 1 or 2 or uh, potentially even in the starter cards. Uh, you get all these things really, really early, uh, and that makes it a really nice option that a lot of people can play. You can see we're gonna play against even the best deck in the game with uh, the Zabu uh, in the final round. So uh, this deck just has a lot of tools to be able to disrupt a lot of things. I do also think that there might be some strength in battle mode of just having different ways to be able to attack the game. And that's what this Spectrum Destroyer deck is really, really good at. You'll see that. I don't want to spoil too much about the games. I think that having multiple options for the final turn is just really good in Marvel Snap in general, but especially so in an open deck list format. It almost makes you able to play a closed deck list because your opponent doesn't know which of those two threats you're going to drop on the final turn. So that can obviously be very, very powerful. If you compare that to like America Chavez, for instance, if somebody is always going to drop nine power on turn six and you just have to guess which location that's going to go to, then that becomes very predictable and a lot easier to play around. So that's definitely something I would keep in mind for battle mode going forward, is just having multiple options Options can uh, definitely help to throw your opponents and uh, keep them off guard. We'll jump into the games now. We're gonna look at three games, all with, well, three matches each with multiple rounds and all with live commentary. I do want to say before we get into that that I was a little bit flustered uh, just starting things off for the very first game. I'm gonna say some things wrong, uh, but you'll you'll get the idea of it and I, I uh, settle in eventually. Um, but yeah, there's a lot to pay attention to in an open deck list format because immediately you start the first game and you want to take in all 12 cards that your opponent could possibly play and then you want to keep those in mind at all times. One last caveat before we get started, the layout for the video is not going to be perfect, just how it all appears on the screen. 
The decks are a little bit small, I think, potentially, and I kind of cut off some of the health totals. I think you'll be able to follow along easy enough, uh, but just want to warn you, I know that that's not perfect, and uh, I'll work on it. Without further ado, let's jump into the first one. It's a junk deck. It is a fill your opponent's deck and hand a little bit in the form of Black Widow with cards that they don't want. And that's pretty good. Oh, there's some more junk. It's pretty good for this deck though, I think. I think we're gonna be in a reasonable spot here with some of the other cards that we have access to. I'm gonna turn down my music a little bit in my headphones. So, what are they doing with that? They don't have any destroy. They're just going to try to send it my way. Wow. Okay. And now we can... So we're going to have a turn three professor into potentially Shuri's lab, but ideally maybe even elsewhere. So I think we do this for now. Opponent could do a lot of nasty stuff here. I don't love my hand this game. But I think the fact that we get to set up for a professor next turn, we're also armoring into Shuri's lab right now to play around Shang-Chi. I think that's gonna be good for us. And then we'll have to watch out for Gamora and Doc Ock. Three cards from my opponent. That's going to be potentially the hood into Shuri's lab, Green Goblin over into Shadowland for us, and a Black Widow into Shuri's lab. Okay. Well, I like my odds in Shuri's lab. Awkward thing is this ties over in Elysium. guess we probably just do this then. We're planning on losing Elysium, and then we're going to try to win over in Shuri's lab. Ideally with either Spectrum or Destroyer plus Ant-Man or Mojo. The Professor will, will protect the Shadowland as well, so I think that this is overall a pretty decent play here. And we have to see if my opponent has any type of... Anything at this point that can get them out of this situation. And I don't think that we do. Uh, Shuri's Lab also does not care about ongoing effects. We can kind of just do nothing here and then next turn go Mojo, Ant-Man, Spectrum. Though I am a little bit concerned about Debris, potentially. So I might just do like this. Otherwise they could Doc Ock me and make me play a bunch of stuff here, which wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. I think we just play this and then we're set up pretty well to just play a Spectrum. They're just adding power with Sunspot. But we can add eight more over here. That should be enough, and we're also battling for Elysium at the same time. I think this is enough, but we can we can look, right? Um, so we're going to add eight to this location. My opponent could add 20-something here by playing Doc Ock. So this is open deck list. We really should be looking at everything my opponent can do. They have a bunch of cards. They haven't played that much. If they play Doc Ock, then maybe they do win the Shuri's Lab? Have to have Doc Ock plus another card here, which is definitely possible. They've got Titania, they've got Mojo, they've got Debris and Polaris. If 
If we had eight, we go to 35. We never beat Doc Ock here. I'm gonna go for it. Hopefully it's not Doc Ock plus Polaris. No, it's Mojo, which isn't going to give them enough. Wow, okay, and then Shang-Chi is not going to defeat the Destroyer. So that's what I thought. I, I thought that this deck was pretty cool. Because it's tough to play around both Shang-Chi, or er, tough to play around both Destroyer and Spectre. So that's specifically why I chose this deck for an open deck list format. Plus the fact that um, I think Professor X is pretty scary in an open deck list. So we just got an eight cube lead. That's probably going to be enough to win the whole thing. We shall see. We shall see. My opponent is in a really tough spot now where like a turn one snap almost makes them just have to retreat. Looks like they're gonna send this our way with Viper. Again, I really don't care about the junk. So we know they're not a destroy deck, so that doesn't really have a purpose. I think we just try to not take the additional rock from eternity range and just be happy with that. Yeah, we're just gonna try to lose in the big house or maybe, well, we can't play destroyer there. Yeah, big house kind of awkward for us. Okay. I kind of like this. Starting to curve out. Yeah. Let's rock that. Oh, they play the demon. Makes sense. So they have a little bit of a lead over Mirror Island. We can obviously steal that lead later with Destroyer. So I'm not particularly worried. Warpath is also going to have some surprise value once we blow up the hood later. So I think playing a little bit here should make this pretty good for us. And I have to decide if I'm going Professor. Okay. That's annoying, but it actually pumps up our Warpath, so I maybe don't hate it. I have to decide here if we're going Professor. But I don't think we are. I also don't think this is that great. We could almost get away with this. Okay. That is the strength of this deck. Turn five, open deck lists. Just the threat of Professor X, I think, is going to be really good. So, um, yeah, that's really interesting as far as this format is concerned. But we'll see how that shakes out into game three. We're now only playing for one cube for the next three games. It's got the turn one sunspot. We've got a nice little curve here, though, with Colossus into Eternity Range. Surprised that they don't battle for this as much, considering it's a jump deck. Maybe they just know they're not winning it. Ooh, Sanctum Sanctorum. So my opponent has won a location. That's pretty good, but they cannot snap. So, we've got to win both of these other two locations. I think this is where we go from here. I could certainly see playing Cosmo, though, still. Got something in my eye. Yeah, let's play Cosmo. My opponent has a lot of on reveal effects, but this could mess up with debris. There you go. You get the rocks. All right, and then Warpath... Plus Professor does seem like it'll be pretty strong here. Viper could be a little bit annoying, but not even that annoying. Yeah. <laughs> Just have the perfect reads on them. 
So now we put my opponent in an awkward spot where they, they're probably pretty likely to Gamora or Dr. Octopus into Shadowland. So, this is losing the location. And I don't want to, we have so little space that I don't want to just lock myself out here. The nice thing is that my opponent doesn't get to snap going into this turn. If we play anything here, we probably just lose the location. Maybe I just destroy her there? Oh, I can't, can I? If I want to destroy her there, then I just have to profess her. This puts me in a really awkward spot if they dock Ock. Let's see, is it dock Ock or Gamora? Yeah, it is dock Ock. We want destroyer, please? Yes! Yes! Oh, that is so unfortunate for my opponent. Man, and we can still fill this location and win with Mojo. Oof, that is a bummer. I think we actually don't even play Mister. We just play Armor, Mojo, Ant-Man, and this plays around Shang-Chi as well. GG, Andy. Unlucky. And here's the Shang-Chi. Uh, Mojo's going to take it regardless, but uh, really unfortunate that, uh, yeah, we just, we had their number every single time with the open deck list format, and we were able to find a pretty easy win there. Really good matchup for us, too. Uh, an undefeated round for us. So, on to round two. So, a little bit of lockdown lanes with the Goose and the Storm. It might be a little bit tricky for us if they're able to get those off in some combination while we're also Professor Xing. But, not a super powerful deck, not a Zabu deck or anything, and I think that's a snap. I think that's a snap and will cause a retreat from my opponent. Yeah, my deck is just way better for TVA. They could have stormed the TVA, but I think snapping aggressively like that just gets us a free cube and moves things along here. So, happy to do it. Game two, and we've got Elysium, which is a cool one. We've also got Cosmo Destroyer. That's the game plan here. Though if we Cosmo and they Goose or Storm that location... Okay, well, now we got options. Um, that's going to be pretty good for us. Wait, my opponent's snapping. They're an Odin deck. They're an Odin deck, and we're a Destroyer deck. Snap. That is curious. Now, they do have priority here. But I guess they're planning on storming or thawing or something. Um, either way, Cosmo into Elysium seems pretty dang good for me. Okay, they are confident. They're going to storm the when other location. So at this point, we can still battle for this flooded location. Warpath is really, really strong. The best thing that they can do right now is Wong. Yeah, that's going to make it really tough for them. That, yeah, because now they can't play any of their expensive cards anywhere else. I think we might snap here. Yeah, okay. Cool, cool. I was thinking about snapping just right away because Nowhere plus Cosmo seemed really good for me knowing my opponent's deck. And it's so funny how we've already gotten three cubes and my opponent has only played one card so far. But I know their deck. And that's also, I should bring up, why I wanted to play a deck with Cosmo and Armor. Just because I saw the potential of that as a really powerful, aggressive hate card. I'll Ant-Man open. My opponent has no one-cost card, so it's just my Ant-Man that gets played on turn one. Nothing else other than, like, you know, some 
weird locations. Wakanda? <laughs> Gotta like these locations again now. The Ant-Man's gonna move over into Wakanda, so I might as well play armor here. It could get awkward because my opponent can storm Wakanda or storm the Bifrost. So that could make things a little bit more difficult for us, but I'm just gonna curve out with armor for now. Can't play your first card here each turn, so Black Widow could allow us to play there later. Otherwise, that's definitely a little bit more of a location for my opponent. I think I'm gonna double up into the... Oh, we can move cards into there with Bifrost. That's probably something my opponent is considering right now as well. All right, let's play this. And are we going to see a Storm of the Bifrost? No, it's a Naked Wolfsbane. That's not super great. So they're going to have to come up with a Storm right now. Or they're probably losing Morag. Kind of just like this. This game's going pretty well for us, though I do think White Tiger shenanigans could put us in an awkward space. Yeah, but... Oh, that's not where they wanted to put that. Because now they can't play their White Tiger onto their Wong. So that's a little tricky. So they can still storm in Wakanda. That said, I think that this is incredibly powerful. I'm going to snap before we Professor X, and I imagine they retreat to Professor X here. Okay, they're playing it, and they're playing two cards this turn, so it's Scorpion plus Ironheart. Okay, okay, this is reasonable. But they can't play in Wakanda, so this investment is kind of toast. And if we just play Spectrum, that's going to be really tough. So, what could they do? They don't really have too many options at this point. It's really just Gamora, Odin, Spectrum. They don't have too many options. I think that this is... Really tough to beat, though, too, at the same time. I think we could Spectrum or Destroyer. Either way, we grab the win there. And, uh, yeah, grab the cube. So, on to game four. We are now five cubes up. One cube, two cubes, two more cubes. Throne Room. That seems like a good location. None of the cards in their deck, like, they're not playing Black Panther. It's a basically a Black Panther. Pantherless kind of Black Panther deck pulls uh, mostly one and two. Generally, you drop the Colossus at this stage of the game. Just debating if we want to warpath into the throne room or what we want to do. We're not going to be able to work out there, but we do have Colossus, and looks like my opponent's going to have a little bit more of their lane locked down on this one. Now, they don't have Shang-Chi, so we don't have to protect this monster, but I think it's still probably fair to do so, most likely. also do this. I mean, the monster isn't really a lead. Yeah, I think we have to armor it, though. Because we're not, uh, we're not gonna be able to play Destroyer into this location. That just wouldn't be good. Okay, the throne room diminishes a little bit of our lead over there. We can do this or this. They're not really battling for Monster Island right now, though. I 
they probably just play this. It's a little unexciting. It's really just for five power, but keeping this lane open is potentially going to give us more options in the future. Mojo is also worth more than five. Okay. I think we're probably just losing this one. I think we will beat... So if we play this here, we get three... That puts us up to 15, 24. We would tie a double tiger, and then we'd be able to steal it with Spectrum. Oh, and with Mr. Fantastic. No, you know what? I think we do want Fantastic there. I think I can stay in it for one more cube. So here come the Tigers. Potentially Gamora here, actually, too. That would have been more annoying, but I'm fine with Tigers because we actually beat the Tigers. And then this seems like it's kind of tough. So I think a snap... doesn't scare them. Let's just think about the other moves it could be. So it's probably the best play here is Ironheart plus Wolfsbane. I have no clue if we beat that. We definitely lose in the center. We probably win here because we're up by three already, they would need to get four triggers, though. Or just three triggers would do it. Uh, but we're going to have three. Okay. I think we've got the stats to win here, but it's going to depend. Oh, they went Wolfsbane first. It shouldn't matter. They're still going to win in the center lane. And then Ironheart. Oh, and they did that so they could get the triggers onto Wolfsbane, which is going to cost them. So that's four cubes, and that leaves my opponent with one health remaining. And that's going to put him into a tough spot. Now, we are going into round five, so I believe this is when things get high stakes. But my opponent has to win every single game from here. They've got to, they've got to run the next five games. That's, it's tough. Let's go Ant-Man. Uh, Colossus would still be pretty good right here. We could armor into Hala. If my opponent's looking to like get rid of a Black Widow or something, though... I don't think they necessarily are. Yeah, I don't think I care about that. Oops. I think I just try to win this location. Scorpion. Okay. Looks like we're battling for the middle, though. We still do have the tools to do so with Warpath. I think this game's going to get a little bit spicy now. Could do this to throw two power into Hala. But that would take power off of Warpath, so I think this is our only play. If we lose the Lizard, it's actually worse that we lost the ability to play a card into Morag. But I think that we've got the chops to battle for this here, unless they draw Mjolnir. there's not really any additional stakes for staying in it. This isn't Marvel Snap at this point. This is just Marvel Card Battle. Because the, the cube, we're just playing for two cubes. Five times. That That's all that this is at this point. So, I 
think that puts me in a reasonably decent position. Oh, maybe I should have played Warpath into Jotunheim. That might have been better, huh? I mean, my opponent's going to be able to win Morag with their White Tigers, so... I'm not... trying to win there. They have to consider Warpath here. That's for nine? Can they even beat that in general? They might have to Wolfsbane just to put up a shot. Oh, they're going to Storm win to save it. Okay, that's smart. Hand. That's smart. And now Mojo is kind of insane here. And I think we might Mr. Fantastic. Mojo should win us the location and then I think the goal is Colossus Captain or potentially Destroyer off the top. Um, Destroyer off the top means that we lose four power off the lower path. All right, they're just setting up with a Wong or maybe a White Tiger. You know, Wong set up here. So, yeah, that's the tricky one, isn't it? Destroyer. Because mm, I can't really even... Oh, wait. Destroyer and I lose the flooded location. What was I thinking with that? Well, there's no sense in ever retreating. So that's funny. Colossus might be enough to win Jotunheim. And then we're actually bricking ourselves into the flooded location, but either they tiger there, or they Mjolnir there, or they don't. And now we beat tiger here, we beat tiger here. Or not tiger, we beat all this Wong stuff. I like my chances still. I mean, there's no point in conceding. So I'm not going to, and it looks like it's just double tiger. Which means they lose Jotunheim, even though they win Morag, and then they also lose the flooded location. So, GG, Squeaky. There is game number two with Open Deckless, and now we are on to the finals. We are going to try our best. They are playing a Zabu list with a bunch of interesting tech cards, and a few of those don't really impact our deck at all. But a few of them do. My opponent's playing Enchantress in their deck which I think is going to make things pretty tough, kind of impossible to play around. I basically have to set up wherever they Cosmo, they might just never drop their Cosmo, or I have to set up where I Cosmo, and then find some other fun stuff to do. So we do have the Cosmo, that's good. I'll read out my opponent's deck list. You know what, I'm probably gonna put it all on the screen as well. So I actually will not read it out. My opponent has the turn one Korg. Okay. Negative zone, well, it does seem like we should start with this. That seems pretty straightforward. Colossus into negative zone, pretty good. And my opponent's battling hard early for Baxter building, so they want priority. Mindscape, that's really tricky. I think we're going to start battling back for Baxter. Mindscape is definitely questionable, and here we see my opponent not playing their Cosmo, also not playing Zabu. This seems pretty good. They're just going to play, like, Dark Hawk. They could... No, they can't Shang-Chi the Warpath. I think we can snap to no turn three play, no Zabu. I think I snap no Zabu. See how that makes him feel. Mindscape's gonna make things tricky for them. Okay, they have the turn four Zabu, so plan here is for my opponent to now drop their hand, but we get to drop our hand which I think is the impressive thing here, and part of the reason that I snapped is I'm not giving my opponent anything cool to do with this. 
just doing this, we're protected against... We do lose negative zone to Enchantress. But I'll still play that into Mindscape. I think that's fine. And I think the Baxter building basically becomes impossible to battle for. And we're really just hoping to draw Spectrum off the top. I think this is an Enchantress into the negative zone. Oh, wow. Okay. We are now losing the Baxter building, but we found the Spectrum. And I think that was kind of the whole game plan here, was hope to draw Spectrum... So we can add plus four to this location. We also did see that they just neglected to play Cosmo in turn four, which I think is smart. They're going to be able to play Mr. Fantastic here, putting this up to seven, but I think we can steal Baxter building. This goes up to seven. This is five plus three. That's eight. So that's enough to win negative zone as well if we Spectrum here. Okay. Sounds good to me. It's battle for four. Ooh, they put the Enchantress here too. Scarlet Witch Enchantress? Scarlet Witch Fantastic, it's gotta be, right? Yeah. Scarlet Witch Fantastic, but then we get to add eight power here. That's enough to win Baxter Building. Take him for four cubes. Nice. Okay, Mindscape really helped in that one. And I'm definitely snapping if my opponent doesn't have the turn three Zabu, right? So, a decent start to it. A decent start to it all. Up four cubes. It's really good to win cubes early. Which is a really interesting part of battle mode. Uh, Fisk Tower can destroy Arrow. We just have to have priority. They have the turn one Korg again. Okay. Tilon is not bad. I think I probably just play armor here so that I don't have to deal with this. Now if they Enchantress here, that's probably still fine for us. They're gonna have decent odds to find their Zabu by turn four if they don't have it on turn three. They do kind of run out of gas here from the Attilon Zabu deck. I don't think Attilon is great with the Zabu Sarah decks. Could be wrong. All right, get my Colossus out. They do have the turn three Zabu. And we don't have a great turn three play now. We can hit one of our three drops, but we don't. So we're just playing Ant-Man here. There is kind of a cheeky maneuver that we could do is pile up on the Zabu, but then they can still just Enchantress it in the final turn. So that's not great for us. I think it's probably just this. I, I retreat to a snap here, though. Mm. Rock slide right before the Attilon is good. That is good. That is very good. Okay, so now we have to Cosmo. If we Cosmo this location, it protects us against Enchantress and Arrow. So all of that seems pretty good and annoying. We can maybe steal a lane with the Professor plus Spectrum. We could do this to turn on Ant-Man. Kind of have to commit to that right now, though, which is awkward. It's not that much power. You know what? I'm going to go for it, because I think we can win another lane with Professor. Actually, I guess it's kind of telegraphed into Sakaar. Okay, that actually gives me a lot more options. That means I can draw Destroyer now, too. I'm just doing this for the time being.
They can't go arrow, arrow. So we just have to battle for this location both turns. Oh, a snap. I mean, they probably see they can win on Fisk Tower pretty easily. But what else do they have in their deck? Arrow isn't enough to take it, because we go up to 16 there. Enchantress? No, they can't Enchantress there. Alright, I'll play for one more cube. Sarah, but that's not enough to win. And then Fisk Tower... Her Enchantress taking out their own Zabu. But from here, Fisk Tower's pretty easy for them to win, right? So how many cards do they have in hand? Two. Four here? What does that actually translate into? Arrow. Okay, so if they play Arrow, they win this location, and then I cannot win the game. It's just Arrow. There's only two cards left in their deck at the same time. I think I'm just ready to leave this one. I just want to... Yeah. I don't want to give away our entire lead here. We're still up by two cubes. I thought it was okay to play for one more cube with all of it. jump into the next one. Round three. Sorry, just managing a bunch of, like, technical stuff, too, while we figure out. It's all, it's all brand new, and I'm, like, kind of paying attention to the behind-the-scenes stuff in the tournament as well. Turn one Korg again? Wow! Again with the Korg. Well, Colossus wins the bridge. That's cool. Right? Let's double check on that. My opponent has armor to win the bridge. Also Enchantress to destroy Colossus. Let's do it for now. Oh, they got the armor. Okay. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. So, do want to keep Enchantress in mind. It is also awkward that we are mindscaping. And they are going to steal our destroyer and our other stuff. And there's nothing in either of our decks that turn off this mindscape. So, without ramp, without electro... We are stuck giving this destroyer to my opponent. That's rough. That's rough. Let's play cap for now. Assemble. And then I think I just play around Enchantress like this. We did already have a Mindscape game, right? Where I gave my opponent nothing. So that might make them a little bit fearful of Mindscape. Same time, they've got the turn three Zabu. I mean, if we can Cosmo and Enchantress here, I think that that's pretty sweet. Cool. But here's, of course, where things get incredibly dicey. Um, I just can never actually win this game. There's nothing I can do. Except for battle for both of these locations so that... Destroyer here is a bait. 
but I can't even do that because they're going to play more stuff into Mindscape this turn. Yeah. Okay. They played Darkhawk here and Cosmo, so now they can destroy her mid. Oh, but I have priority. I mean, there's no way they ever fall for that. If they were to play Destroyer and lose, I mean, that's hilarious. But there's no way they fall for that. Is it worth one cube for the highlight reel? Oh, they have priority anyways. What am I thinking? All right. Let's keep our one cube lead. Uh, I don't think we're going to have it for too much longer. But let's go into game four now. Still up one cube from that first game, but Zabu lists are just going to be tough. I cannot wait till this thing is out of the game. But for now, we battle. Of Mindscape games, too. This deck is not good for Mindscape. It's kind of cute. What they got for a Scarlet Witch, so our third location is Hellfire Club. And we snuck a one cost card in here. I think I'll just Cosmo to protect. The Hellfire Club. Crimson Cosmos is actually a way to beat Zabu. Because they cannot play Zabu cards in there. They can play Arrow there, and they can play Serra there. Okay, snap. They don't have Zabu. like kind of a read and a little bit silly because they could just be slow rolling their Zabu which would be like an incredible next level thing oh you can kind of see the health I just realized you guys might not be able to see the health that easily on these screens apologies for that I guess they can also get cards into Crimson Cosmos via Strange Academy. We might lock down Strange Academy with the Professor next turn. That could be really cheeky. Yeah, you guys can, like, kind of see the health. If you're paying attention, I'm not going to, like, edit this too much down. So hopefully that all works. All right, and Mojo and Armor. So we're losing by one in Strange Academy. I do think there's actually reasonable chances that they play there. At which point, this is a reasonable play. So... There's a lot of, like, mind games to be had right now, but they currently can play anything into Crimson Cosmos, but I think they're most likely to play um, Sarah or Arrow. If they do that, they can, like, half win a location. Though, actually, we beat Sarah and Arrow, it's up to them where they want to play it anyways. Actually, you can't move a Professor. Um, so that is worth considering. Mm. No, I think it's just always this. Loses to Rock Slide, loses to Darkhawk potentially, but I don't know, it just seems like a good play to me. Alright, it is Arrow. But, we win the Hellfire Club. And we're set up to win Strange Academy as well. Which is why I like this play. 
I think they have to retreat here. I don't think there's any universe where they can play this out. I mean, this is actually, unfortunately, our best play, and it's not good. But I think they just have to retreat, and they probably slow retreated. Wow, they're in it still. Wow, that is crazy to stay in here. All right, well, good on them. Oh, they had Shang-Chi for Destroyer. Wow. Wow, they were actually hoping we had Destroyer. And we did it. Which is what I said round one is the strength of this deck. Being able to threaten two completely different game plans on that final turn is so scary, and now my opponent has to win every game. Which is definitely possible for a Zabu Darkhawk deck. But we're going to try to make it tough. We want my opponent to have priority. And then we want to go Armor Cosmo. We don't even need to go Armor. We just have to go Cosmo. I mean, yeah, Kamartage. We'll take a look at their deck again. Don't think they're... Oh, no, they do. Hmm. Okay, well, maybe I'm battling for here now. Yeah, I'm going to go Armor plus Cosmo plus Warpath into Kamartage now. Fair enough. Hmm. Scarlet Witch on the throne room is a little bit awkward, and now we have a Tillon. But I've got Priority, and I've got Cosmo. I think that should be a pretty good start for us here. I also like the Vibranium Mines. I could have actually mined some, but not for a Tillon. I want to draw Spectrum first, but if we draw Spectrum, it is pretty reasonable to start mining away. Now they can't disable this. We did draw... The mine. So we could do this, and then next turn we could go Fantastic plus Vibranium. So that's probably a good draw. I think this is where we want it. This protects us against um, Enchantress, though. It doesn't allow us to draw any Vibranium, which I think is pretty useful here. Okay. We get a little bit owned. Fair enough. Fair enough. I guess we do play it on Reveal Effect. <laughs> kind of forgot about that one, huh? Excuse me, options. Yeah, that's better. like impossible to play around both Spectrum and Destroyer for my opponent. So they added more power to the mines. That's a dark hawk. So that seems mediocre. Oh, we added way too many things into the mines. I did not think about the Vibranium and the Darkhawk. That might cost us some cubes. And I think it just makes way too much sense for them to throw something into Kamartage here. I think this is our best play. It's either we make them put just a little bit power of power into Attilon, or make them just put a little bit more power into Kamartage. Can win this with basically anything. Can they win both locations? They played a lot of their cheap cards already. 
I mean, I'm not retreating here ever. It's just a mind game. I almost feel like this one's better. Mm, no. Doing this one. Hmm. Okay. Arrow. And then we still lose. Fair enough. Fair enough. Arrow's a good play there. Okay. Down to five health. Now it's almost bad that just we revealed something, you know? <laughs> um, still have to lose three. My opponent has to go five. Oh, that's, that's pretty tough. They don't have too much. Actually, no, they do have cards to take advantage of Gamma Lab. They also have Shang-Chi. Okay, Gamma Lab might be more suited for their deck. And we don't have Shang-Chi, which is also important in letting my opponent know they can kind of just go for it. We need to draw armor. It's very awkward. If we draw armor here, then we double drop. Okay. Now I don't have to worry about Enchantress, but I've lost the Gamma Lab. willing to commit to just having lost the Gamma Lab? Like, they could just play Zabu here. You know what? I should still battle for it because this is shang chi -able. And they got a Shang-Chi something. Looks like they went for a Shang-Chi, which means... Oh no, they went for Zabu. Okay, that's also a reason to battle for Gamma Lab this turn. All Shang-Chi locales. Okay, well... Probably gonna make them Shang-Chi. Ah, this is such a weird one. This is such a weird one. This is basically like we don't have a lead in this location, so maybe I should play for it. And then I'm just gonna try to. No, they've already Shang Chi'd me here. Rock Slide plus Shang Chi. Clearly, no Dark Hawk. Oh wow. Okay. So this could be good for us then. Professor X. I think the play is Professor X on Gamma Lab. Spectrum onto Destroyer's location. And maybe even Spectrum into Mojo, since we lose this to Shang-Chi. Alright, let's try it. We can Spectrum, that's just adding power to the Professor. We could also Armor in some capacity to protect against a Shang-Chi on the final turn. So, a lot of options... Shang-Chi being the main option for my opponent, though we don't want to discount Arrow. Arrow is a lot less useful when they don't have much else. So, the fact that we are now professoring, so right now it's a tie. Um, so this basically means we have to Spectrum to win that location. My opponent has three cards in hand and they're going to be able to dump all of them. So if they got the chi, they got the chi. And that's not true. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to lose this location or tie this location because then we lose to Shang Chi. Well, we 50-50 Shang Chi. We could just do this. And this wins if they just go chi plus some other irrelevant stuff. This is seven power here, means that we're down by three. They could certainly win this one. I think this is just my strongest play. Let's play Spectrum and Destroyer and see if that is enough. The fact that they're thinking, yeah, it means that they probably have it. 
They've got a lot of different options right now. Riding 7 power, we're going up to 18 in the center location. We're winning the Gamma Lab. Can they win both of the other ones? Scarlet Witch for Eternity Range plus Arrow. That's not enough. And we get the win. There we go. Tournament win. 3-0. We did get some losses against Coco eventually. But really strong deck, I think, for open tournament formats. I think that this video showcased that. And this was a lot of fun to do. So that's going to be it for me today, guys. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Notelux Given. Peace.